one of the best motivational speech ever. Let's see what he has to say. Is there anybody in the room? You still have some room left for some goals and some dreams. You have to have some goals and dreams to make it in life. That is so true. All right, so here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to write that down for me. All right, I want you to write that down for me. All right. You gotta write down the goal. That is true. Write down your goal, people. Now, now remember, the goal is execute, execute, execute. All right, so here's the, here's the challenge that I have. So there, there, there are two groups of people walking the earth. All right, you got, you got one group right now. Now, both groups have these dreams and these goals. Both groups from the time that they were young saw things on television, read things in books. They physically saw people doing things. And it was like, yo, I want to do that. Like, I want that. I, I remember being a kid, you know, and I used to watch the Brady Bunch. And I used to be like, yo, I want a family like that. You, you see what he said? He, he was watching something when he was a kid, and he said that he wanted a family like that. So your, your, your dreams and your goals, right, are implant, implanted in your subconscious mind. But uh, the key here is to write it down and execute. Execution. So you have to work towards your goal. I, re I remember watching it. See, my mom had me. She got pregnant at 17 with me. I didn't really start talking to my biological father, like literally having a conversation with my biological father until I was 30. So as a child, because I didn't have that, you know, traditional home, I remember looking at the Brady Bunch going, I, I want, I, I remember, oh, leave it to Beaver. Oh, leave it to Beaver. Like, I just was like, the, you know, as, a, as the Cleavers, like they just had it going on. You know what I'm saying? They never like really argued. You know what I'm saying? Like they worked everything out. Everybody like had roles and responded. It was just, they were great, right? And so I, I remember growing up like, yo, one day, like this is my, this is my reality. But one day, one day I'm gonna have a family just like Leave it to Beaver. Like I So the thing is, like myself, I had a rough past, right? I grew up in a very poor country. Right, I grew up in Haiti in a very poor country in an environment, toxic environment. Right, but I set my eyes uh, on a brighter future. I set my eyes on a brighter future. I said, All right, one day, uh, you know, I, I might live in the richest land in the world. Right, and which is, you know, what really happened today. Right, so today I'm in the United States and I have a family. Right, but I didn't dwell on my current circumstances. Right, that I was poor that I was struggling, I said, one day I will live in a better country, in the richest land in the world, and I'm gonna have a family for myself. You know, what he's saying right now really relates to me, right? And maybe it relates to you in some kind of way as well. So let's listen more. I remember saying it to myself, and I, I remember friends, like they want to drive these kind of cars and leave in these type of neighborhoods. I wasn't really thinking about that kind of stuff. I was just like, you know what? Like one day, I just want to have a happy family. Like I want to come home and I want my kids to like run up to me, dad. When they get older, I want them to be proud of me. Right, I just have these dreams. I'm gonna put my kids through college. They're not gonna have to pay for college. I'm gonna put them through college. Like they're gonna go to, you know, these big colleges and whatever. I just had, I had dreams. You know, we all have different kind of dreams in life, right? So his dream was to have a family. Uh, some other people dream might be to have a big house, some other people dream might be to travel, and you know, I want to have a successful business, to have a beautiful car. We all have different dreams, right? But the concept remains the same. You have to set your eyes to, to, to the future, and then you have to write it down, write down your goal. And then you also have, you know, to, to work toward, toward the goal in order to make it happen, right? So we all have different dreams, but the concept remains the same. I, I had dreams and so what I want you to do for me is I want you to and I know a lot of you are adults and you, you got, you're, doing, you're adulting and, and sometimes you don't have time for dreams and goals and stuff right but I want you to do me a favor like don't let life do you like that like don't let life put you in a circumstance or a situation where you stop dreaming like don't let life put you in a situation where 
you are helping somebody else make their dreams become a reality you forgot you have your, your own like don't don't do that don't don't get so caught up giving some job 30 40 50 60 hours of your day that you don't have any time left for yourself that's what makes us human we gotta have dreams so the minute that we start dreaming we start growing right and we can also ultimately use lose our humanity so we can never stop dreaming so we gotta keep on going keep on dreaming keep on having goals that's what you know fuels that's what fuels us as a human being so we gotta dream and so what we're gonna do right now we're gonna get back to the basics right we're gonna get back to and you know i wake up every day and people say yo e what's the like what's the thing i know you say execution but like what's that thing and it's like to be fruitful to multiply to have dominion like no 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 when i wake up every day like i claim that 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 the first commandment was i was commissioned to be fruitful to multiply and to have dominion like that's what i was commissioned to do like that was that's the command and so i want you to write down those dreams and goals that you still have that you have not accomplished i want you to write them down All right, people, let's grab pen and paper right now and write down our dream and goal. And my suggestion to you, make it short. And write it in one sentence, clear and concise. All right, let's write down our goal on a piece of paper, clear and concise in just one sentence. If you're struggling to find out what it is, I suggest take some time and write it down in one clear sentence. That is very important. And so do me a favor, I don't, I don't want reality right now. I'm not interested in how much your student loans are. I'm not interested. Because your student loans are sucking your dream. I'm not interested right now. And I got a divorce and right now I just can't. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Eric, I lost a child and you don't know what it's like to. I'm not, I'm not interested in your reality right now. I, I, I want you to get back to your dreams. I want you to get back to your goals because no matter what has happened in life you've got another 30 years another 40 years another 50 years like you can't get stuck on like you can't let that thing that devastated you in 1989 the thing that devastated you in uh, 1996 2001 like you can't wake up every day to 2001 2001 was a tragedy yes it was but you can't stay there you can't keep waking up to that I got you got to wake up to your dreams and go look I always tell people we all go through pain get a reward for yours you know we all go through pain we all go through pain we I really understand what he's saying so your conscious mind is what sees you know the bad things in life every single day your conscious mind sees the disasters and the poverty and your current circumstances which is you know what the physical eye can see and that's why it keeps you know, fueling your subconscious mind, you know, whatever comes into the subconscious mind, this is what, you know, the life brings back to you. So if you keep fueling, you know, uh, negative stuff into, into your subconscious mind, the sub subconscious mind is putting out the same results, the same negative stuff. So what it's saying here is to dream, right? To, to instead of focusing on your current reality, which is bad, so dream for a better future. So when you dream for something better and you write it down, so that comes into your subconscious mind. The good stuff comes into your subconscious mind and sub the subconscious mind put, put out the good stuff back into your life. This is what he's is, what is explaining here. We all go through something. We all go through our go through. I wouldn't have time to tell you about all the trauma that I went through in my life. But I just figured since I went through so much trauma, I might as well use the trauma to make all my dreams become a reality. So you got my homie that called me the other day. Like we had, a, I'm like, I'm, this is blowing my mind. I'm like, God, I'm the number one motivation in the world. Like, I don't know why you calling me and you're not getting personal development from me. No, listen to what I just said. This is my best friend in the whole wide world. Listen to me, very close. Like this is the dude I trust with my wife and my kid. Like this is the person that my dreams, like he helped me with my dream. I said, why are we on the phone talking about deficits right now? 
why are you doing that do you know do you know people who don't know me and i'm not their best friend in the whole wide world have gone through one of my programs and now they're killing the game and you know me and you're not killing the game so we're on the phone i'm like yo god do me a favor like can we stop talking about your reality i'm not interested i'm like right now in marital bliss and you're trying to bring me back to divorce are you talking about your marriage it is so true. Prophets are never welcome in their own land, you know. So, you know, you might be the biggest prophet, you know. You, you might you might be, a, you know, somebody who's well connected spiritually, but your family member will doubt you. Your close friends will doubt you. Strangers know your value. Strangers get more from you than your own friends, close relatives, you know, close family members and friends. That is so true marriage and where it ain't i don't want to talk about that right now i'm in bliss so don't don't bring me there you i'm i'm, I'm a multi-millionaire you're talking about you ain't making no you're not making enough money to take care of you i don't want to talk about that talk can we talk about your dreams and goals and get to them so we're having a conversation right and so i said look stop just stop right just tell me what are your dreams and goals you're like you know to be a multi-millionaire to do this with my wife take care of my kid Look, look, I want you to look at your goals and I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you know what it takes to make that happen? Like, do you, like, like literally, like, because this is what all it's going to take. Three things, it's all it's going to take. Do you know what it takes? Look, the only thing it takes to go from where I went to, a homeless, high school dropout, sleeping in abandoned buildings, eating out of trash cans. I went from being a high school dropout, getting a GED to having a PhD. Listen to me, the only thing it takes is knowing what it takes. So one day I woke up and was like, okay, E, stop talking about what you don't have. You need to know what you don't know so you can get to where you're trying to get to. Listen to me, guys. I'm real simple. The first thing I'm going to ask you, do you know what it takes? That's it. Now, if you know what it takes, that's great. You need to know why, why, why you don't know in order to make it happen. So you see, he was a, a high school dropout, but you know, he, he needed knowledge. So he needed to get a P, uh, GED in order to get a PhD and in order to get to be where he, he's at right now. So, you know, in, or, in order for you to be successful, there are steps that you need to take in life. And sometimes you don't know, uh, you need a certain knowledge, but you don't have it. So you need to go after it. Maybe you need to take a course, right? Or go to seminars, seminars or, or hire, or if maybe you don't have money to hire a coach, but you know, those things that you can do, they are very inexpensive courses online, or you can go to YouTube and type the subject that you, you, you know might give you the knowledge you need in order to become successful, right? So you need to acquire, take steps to acquire the knowledge that, that you don't have in order to become successful in the field that you want to become successful. Great, you mark it off. And I remember before being in that room with Warren Buffett, I never even thought about, I never even thought about making that kind of money. I never thought about making money, but I was sitting in the room with Warren Buffett. So I get in the room with Warren Buffett and what blows my mind is that he's human. Look, there are those of you who watch people on TV and you go, oh, and you admire them and you love them. And some of you watch so much TV because you really want to live your dreams through somebody else. You're not ready to do the work. Real, so you watch it on TV so you can get inspired. And so I, Warren Buffett, everybody's sitting down, Warren Buffett walks in the room, and when Warren Buffett walks in the room, it blows my mind. I'm like, yo, this dude is human. Like, he didn't come in with an Italian suit on. He came in with like a normal, I'm like, that's a normal suit. You know what was so crazy? He could wear a Sears and Robux suit because he was already one of the richest men in the world. He didn't have to come in and impress nobody. He didn't have to come in and prove that he was rich because we know he's rich. I'm like, what, a, what an amazing feeling. Like, you can be your authentic self. Like, Warren Buffett didn't have to come in because of other... He didn't have a Pat Riley, like, cut the... He didn't, it was just a normal button-up.
and he came in the room and he like he's not GQ so he wasn't trying to act like he came in to give financial advice and I sat there listening to this man talk and I was like whoa my mom worked for Ford she later got married the person that became my father worked at GM my whole life I never heard that conversation before I had only heard the working class language it was a different language and I walked out of that room and was like yo I know what it takes So being successful. So that is so important. If you want to become successful, then you need to listen to successful people, right? If you want to make money, you're not going to be listening to a broke guy or a broke person who, who got no money, right? You want to become a doctor, you're not going to go ahead and listen to somebody who's not a doctor. You need to listen to a doctor. That's what you want to become. You want to become a millionaire, then you need to listen to a millionaire. If that's so true, you know, don't take advice from people who don't know who hasn't achieved the thing that you want to achieve. You know, that is so important. This was not who you are, it's what you know. So I need to get a different relationship to knowledge. So you're in this room and we've been here for a few days. We did not come here to be entertained. You did not come here to get pumped up. And I'm telling you, I'm hype right now. So I'm hyped, but I did not come here just so you can get pumped up or get hyped. You have been given information. You are, you are this close to making every dream you wrote down happen. Why? Because you have been taught by the best of the best. You have been taught by the best of the best. You've been taught by people who've been doing this for years. You've been taught by people who love you and care for you. People who are giving you information that you're not going to get randomly on your own. You are getting 10, 20, 30 years of experience in an hour. And so you are this close to your dreams and goals. So I, I have to ask you the question. You have the information. Now, what are you going to do with it? You have the information. I sat in a room with Warren Buffett. Listen to me very closely. You type my name in. And this is by the glory of God. You type my name in and it's going to say something. You put my name in Google, something's going to come up. I come from working class parents, but when I left that room with Warren Buffett, that is so important, guys. Right? That is so important. Um, it is so important to to buy courses from people that have already made it or to go to seminars and listen to people that have already made it. So it's like all those years of experiences and trials and errors, they, you know, they give it to you. They give you the knowledge of one hour so you can avoid to make the same mistake they made. You know, some people don't want to invest in themselves. Some people don't want to buy courses. Some people think everything is a scam, but it's not, right? That will save you out of years of your life to make mistakes if you can just listen and take notes from a successful person. That is very important. I became a multimillionaire and I never had to talk to Warren Buffett ever again. I didn't have to call Warren Buffett and ask him, now what did you say again? <laughs> I took the information that I was given and I murdered it. What do you have today that you've never had before and what are you going to do with it? You have enough information right now that if you never got any more information, you have enough to make everything you wrote down become a rap. Here's the challenge though. The challenge is not what you know. It is not what you've learned today. The challenge is what you knew before today. I'm going to say it slower because because I it's the simplest thing I'm ever going to say. What you already know is why you are where you are. And if you're going to get to the next level, you're going to have to erase everything you knew about what you knew, what you thought you knew. I'm going to say it again because I see some people like, whoa, Eric, I'm trying to. Yeah, like a wise man used to say, if your cup is already full, then there's no more room for more drink. So you need to, if you, if you, you know, what you are, where you are right now, and you didn't have enough success, then you need to empty your cup so that you can have fresh water 
pour into the cup. All right, that's the only way. Do not get stuck in the past with old knowledge that didn't serve you. You need to empty your cup and let fresh water be poured into your cup. Catch that. It is the stinking thinking that got you where you are right now. It is the limited beliefs that have you where you are right now. You have a limited belief. I remember that I thought I could never do this, but only for people who look like me. I remember, I remember when I was like 19, 20 and I started speaking, 20, 21, and I would go to historically black colleges and I would kill it. And I remember somebody asking me not to do historically black, but to come out of my particular community, my particular way of speaking, my particular way of doing things. And I'm thinking to myself when I first got there, I was like, whoa, I don't know if I could do this. Like they don't come from where I come from. Yeah, your biggest enemy is watching your mind. The negative and limiting beliefs is your biggest enemy. That's what's keeping most of people down because they think they can't do it. You know, combined with the negative environment or, uh, you know, the negative talks in their environment or, uh, you know, the people that surround them is also reinforcing that limiting belief. So that's what's holding most people back. So you need to let go of that. And, and adopt a new belief that you can make it. Anybody can, because we all have the same right on this, in this red sun, in this nature, we all have the same right. It's all about mindset. Like they don't talk like I talk. Like they don't have the experience that I had. I don't know if I have anything to say. And God said to me, you what? <laughs> I'll never forget talking to Les Brown and Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor, Les Brown was like, yo, you're the number one motivational speaker in the world. I wasn't even a number at that time. He said, you're the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I remember, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I remember how the conversation started. I actually named somebody that I thought was number one. And he said, how dare you say they name out loud and say they number one. You're the number one motivational speaker in the world. And you better not ever say they number one. You're number one. And I said, hold up, why? but I, I just started speaking. He says, no one on the planet is giving free information away like you giving free information away. Nobody in the planet loves people the way. There's no other motivational speaker going to prisons. There's no other motivational speaker talking to 12 kids in a detention center. There's no other motivational speaker going to schools and shaking kids' hands on their way to school and not getting paid a dime for it. Meeting them at 6.30 saying, good morning. He said, you are the number one motivational speaker in the world because nobody cares about humans like you care. <laughs>